what specifically do you think of, uh, of uh, Bob's entry, uh, David Townsend? Well, you know, she, obviously we feel that she's a, a compliment, you know, the Clarys and having two exceptional mar uh, three-year-old fillies this year, that they should compliment each other with their style. Corey worked Sonic here this morning. Is it unusual for that to occur? I, I think that, you know, um, you know Corey working Sonic here for, in replacement of Kent, you know, for Keith. I mean, they've got a long history. They go back a long ways, you know, so I think that, and it's just like me for you know, Angel working ours. It's all about communication and feedback and just uh, somebody understanding what you're wanting to get out of them. So it made perfect sense. When you take stock of your chances at the Derby, just some thoughts about your horses, and is it as wide open as everybody thinks it is? It, it, it is right now. Like I said, you know, once it's run, it seems to sort out, and you get a lot of I knew that's. But uh, you know, going in, I think that this group and you know who draws where and the pace scenario will uh, change the, you know, the, the outcome of it. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know, like, with multiple Oaks wins, does that, you feel like that experience is kind of giving you a leg up? <laughs> it, I, I think, you know, as mentioned, you know, with the multiple, you know, the multiple <laughs> runners or attempts at it, I think this, it doesn't make the races any easier. It makes the circumstances around the race a lot easier. You know, and, yeah, I very much feel that if it's, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. Thank you. Steve, Steve uh, looking at Lee, you know, when you saw his Arkansas Derby and you know, how fast he was closing, I mean, how, how much were you sort of crossing your fingers that you, know, that you might get a slop? And it seems like he's got a good... Well, we've touched base on it, but I think, I think with looking at Lee, he is, you know, it's, you look at the PPs, the past performances of this race, and you see a lot of talent. But he has, you know, handled the circumstances, you know, the big event full fields to travel. You know, I don't think that there's near as many variables with looking at Lee as there is with the majority of the field. And also, you know, the rare opportunity to run him going a mile and a quarter. What do you like about Hence, his abilities, and how does he fit for this? I, I think it, as we, his training is indicated, and you know, I think everybody's aware of now, is how much talent he has. You know, how, how fast he moves easily, and, and it's a race. You know, what a good quality. Calumet has three horses in the Derby. You have one of them, obviously. Yeah, so. uh, your, your thoughts on just yeah. sort of their, I don't well, know, resurgence is the right word, but uh, how do you, you know, view them right now? How view their success. How, you know, how special that is. You know, for me to grow up in a racing family, you know, and what Ali Dart, you know, you were kids and you were simply a, a witness or, or a fan of it to, to think that I have an interest in the Kentucky Derby for Calumet Farm, you know, that, you know, Thank goodness for Mr. Kelly to you know to save that and for me to be able to experience it and you know very very deserving of the success that has come up on him. You've been in this race a number of times and not won it. Like uninitiated, why is it so tough to win? But, I mean, I think early on it it feels more like an event than a race, and uh, it is a you know an individual's uh, from horse to horse's one opportunity at it. So. I think that uh, it's simply like you watch, you know, last year's Belmont with Creator. Sometimes just feel, some things feel like they were meant to be, and I think that that's, you know, and after the fact that was a very overwhelming feeling for me in that. And so uh, going into this year, if it's meant to be. It's going to happen. It's a bit your... different than a race. Circumstances. You know, it's just circumstances. You mm -hmm. couldn't make that happen again if you did it over, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Uh, I think when you, you know, from a handicapping or a participant's uh, viewpoint, um, usually you walk back and think that it's sorted. You know, it, it, that would happen again if you did it again. Mm -hmm. In the Derby, that doesn't seem to be the case. <laughs> Given everything your top you've accomplished in careers, is your derby record simply a, a blip in your mind, or is it's it more uh, meaningful than that? You know, health is good, and uh, you know, I feel like I'm in the middle of this career. And, uh, it is the one uh, major box that has not been checked off. Uh, I was, you know, Marty McGee interviewed me the other day, and that was, uh, I believe, completely the angle, you know, for you know, the great fortune that we've had with the 
and multiple horses of the years and the, the victories, you know, the other classic victories we've had, the, you know, the swords and Hall of Fame. We need a Kentucky Derby to look really good on that to add to the list. And the, the, the way you approach is just take as many good shots as you can. And well, no, I know how fortunate you are to be here. Um, I, I feel, you know, uh, it's a very <clears throat> the ownership group of these three horses. So, you know, very appreciative of this opportunity. or excited for for it. Um, they, their you know, affinity or affection for their horses is obvious, and, and uh, you know be able to share that kind of excitement with them is why we're in the game. And uh, you know, it's great to see. And with that being said, when you work out a scenario for all three individuals, when, for them to have success, the scenario is ideal. You know, it, what, you, what they need to have happen to have success in the Kentucky Derby, it needs to unfold that way. It's, and we all know that's not going to happen for everybody. And that's just not on, not just on race day. That's everything. It, absolutely, the whole process. And, and you know, we, we we touch, you know, getting your training in and how you feel this morning about how they're doing physically. Check the high. <laughs> now, immediately, you know, you, how you come out of it, good. Okay, where are we going to draw? Who's going to draw where? <laughs> it, it just, you know, post parade, how they handle all of that. You know, the, the, the patience that is, you know, you're, you have them built up to a physical peak, and then they're, uh, it, you know, and they're obviously very young horses. They're up to a physical peak, better than they've ever been, sharper than they've ever been, and then the amount of patience that the Derby requires right before that moment. And you know, all of those are the things that you're thinking about, you know, when, and, when and you, how the other horses that are near you respond to it can affect your outcome. But when you've got three or more, even in, as the spring goes along, are you ranking them in your mind at all? But well, um. I feel very good about the foundation these three horses have in them and how they are going to accept the things that inevitably happen. And there is very good races ahead of them after this. Um, I do believe, you know, it, you know, talked about uh, your early derby uh, entrance um, and I think that uh, I was pretty good at getting here but I might have been a little done when I got here. And I think that uh, our approach over the, or confidence or just timing, and I think we got a lot more horse while we're here. And, and you know, obviously that's what we're most pleased about. And uh, you know, very proud of the whole team for allowing us that.